Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. All right, we got a fish on the board, starting off strong. Lukey with a jack, cold outside. Little fellow, straight arm this guy. Real straight arm. We got this virus thing going on. A lot of people been asking, can we fish right now? What's the deal? Ramps are closed. Well, the one thing they can't take away from us is wade fishing. Especially if we're out here doing our distance. We're purpose, oh, had a little hit there. We're uh, purposely standing more than 10 feet apart. Yep. And Cody, our camera guy, thank goodness, has great zoom on the camera. So <laughs> we are obeying all the rules. And uh, fortunately, our governor, DeSantis, declared that fishing is essential and considered a very, very awesome outdoor exercise activity. So we'd be good. Yeah, Unfortunately, so we had some jack wagons. I uh, thought it was funny on April Fools to start putting out things that you could get fined $500 if you were caught fishing and then went viral and people started believing it. Did you see all that, Luke? Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, and how many people were like, truly believed it and then they started telling their friends, oh yeah, I heard someone got a $500 fine. Like, come on, guys. Or whoever created it. Yeah, not Like, good. someone took the time. It wasn't just like a meme. Like, there was an official site. And they had like an FWC. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Because oh. I looked at it, I, I t asked one guy, I was like, show me where you saw this. And he sent me the link. And it was like breaking news uh, LPT, like some weird URL. And someone took the time to do it. Yeah. And at the very, very bottom, you see like April Fools. Uh, and I was like, goodness gracious. What's wrong with people out there? Yeah. But yeah, a lot of people have been asking about, about this wade fishing. And and you know we, a lot of our videos are in boats and kayaks and and there's a, a reason for that is just because wade fishing it's it's just that much more important to pick a good spot and uh, because if you don't you you don't have the luxury as a boat or kayak to go and off to a totally different type of area and, unless you have a spot that has a little bit of everything uh, but the truth of the matter is you know if you actually are on the fish wade fishing is the best way to fish because the fish have no idea you're there they can't feel your presence nearly as well when you do hook a fish, like unlike a kayak, right? When you're when you're reeling it in, you're not getting pushed up to the school. You can just pick one fish off at a time, and uh, and and just just have a, an absolute blast. So, wade fishing is incredibly effective. The fish don't care how you get there, right? It's all about just finding the fish. And uh, and so we we selected a spot. This would be the same type of spot that I would have picked in the boat. And the only difference is that it was just it just has to be accessible by by foot you know, legally without trespassing or, or doing anything. And um, so we we just found a, a park and then found a, an area that has a nice looking grass flat, some depth changes and uh, that we can actually walk to from the park, like from the from the parking area. And so that's what we're doing. A cold front just came in. So the water's much colder than I had planned. And uh, and so the fish aren't up on the flat. So we're having to kind of wade out and fishing right on the edge. If I was on my boat, you know, this water's cold enough that the cold snap was uh, was more extreme than I thought. And I think most of the fish are, are a little bit further out there and that would require us to get really wet to go to go that far. So we're gonna be fishing the, this, uh, this trough right here. It gets down from about knee deep down to about three to four feet. Ideally, it would be seven to eight feet given the cold, but we should still at least be able to pick off some fish. So, uh, so far, we just had that jack, and I, I missed another hit before. Um, could have been a trout, but um, the key is just we're going to fish that depth change. Again, we're going to be fishing the exact type of thing that I would fish by boat or by kayak, but we just have to find it, you know, find somewhere that we can actually walk to in this case. So I'm actually re-rigging right now. I had a one-fourth ounce jig head on with Slam Shady, and I thought it was going to be a little bit deeper. I thought these holes were going to be a little bit deeper, and they weren't. So I'm going 3 sixteenths to get a little bit less weeds and bottom and oysters on. Luke, did you ever do that experiment with uh, wetting the, the knot or not and tightening it? Not yet, but it's coming up. What do you guys think? What we're talking about here is, are you actually supposed to wet the knot? It's like, 
Grandpa always told us to, or Dad always told us to. We've seen a couple videos of people saying, you don't do that. Yeah, because we have a lot of knot videos, and uh, yeah, the, one of the most commonly mentioned items is, hey, you're supposed to wet down the knot before you cinch it down. And uh, for those of you guys watching, yes, I am wearing a fanny pack for the first time in my life. It was a, uh, it was a gift. The painting was a gift, Todd. <laughs> now, this was a, uh, I had a daddy daughter dance recently, 80s style, and this was part of my outfit. And I was like, you know what? Times are tough right now. This whole virus thing, we're cutting back, we're trying to save money. Waiter Dave told me I needed a fanny pack. Didn't want to go buy an official one, so I use this thing. It's been sitting in my closet. Look, I'm going to borrow some Slam Shady. Sure I am out. And I don't know that Slam Shady is even allowed to sit in a fanny pack. Nope. Per Definitely the rules. Not. I got to make sure I don't get microphone wet. We've already lost two nice mics. And these are $600 a pop. Coming up on you. Whoop. Well, is this with the six inch rule or six foot rule? What's the deal? Grab one out for me too. Where, where, uh, what pocket? Big one. You got any hand sanitizer in here? Nope. Cody, you think that's funny, huh? Hope you sanitize that camera. Oh, look at this. That's what I'm talking Man. about there. You might want to zoom in on that. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you bring weight fishing? That, that's why you don't bring a fanny pack weight fish. You bring an actual backpack. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to put a couple in the fanny pack. Look at look at the design on that, man. I should wear this more often. Yeah, and so with wade fishing, you know, the, the good thing about it is that you just don't need a lot of stuff, right? You just need some wading boots, and we'll uh, I'll do a review. I've been testing out a, a variety of different wading boots. I've been doing a lot more wade fishing since this uh, this ban happened. Oh. And, uh, and you just need a, a, some sort of backpack. I, I wear backpacks or a fanny pack. <laughs> Um, Dude, Waiter Dave but, has a man a man fanny pack. Yeah, something to just hold gear. And in most cases, wade fishing, I just I just take one rod just just because it's easier. But the reason why I like backpacks is that sometimes if you know if I'm if I'm going to be out for a long time, I'll take two rods. And with a backpack, you actually can rig it so that you can carry two uh, carry an extra rod. You basically just have to like wedge it in this in the shoulder strap, and I'll uh, I can do a more detailed review later, but. You can't, the good thing about backpacks is you can actually store your rod, a, a second rod with you with a, without having to have anything fancy. But for the most part, I just take one rod, I'm using just one lure, and if I, uh, if I want to change to a different lure of different depth, I just get in the bag, grab the stuff, and uh, make a quick, quick lure change and back in action. All right, now I got lighter jig head on, I got a tail on my paddle tail. See what happens. <clears throat> Did you catch that jack without the tail? Yeah. Yeah. It was right on the edge, right on the edge of the grass flat. So we have uh, we have this big flat, and then there's a trough that goes right down, right down the middle of it. And so we're fishing right on the edge. Again, ideally it would be an extra foot or two deep, but uh, we just can't we can't access that deeper water. So we're making the best with what uh, with what we can access. So here's really the, the big thing we want to answer. We don't know that this spot is going to produce it at all, uh, but at least we're out here on a day that, you know, a lot of people would be stuck inside. And the biggest question we're hearing, especially from people in, in Texas and parts of Florida and the Carolinas, even Pennsylvania, that ramps are closed, state parks are closed. We're actually right near a state park. It is, it is closed, however, they, you can still legally pull over on places like causeways and bridges and areas in front of state parks that typically would, would uh, be places that you could launch a kayak or go for a walk in a public area. And obviously we're not attorneys and we don't work for the state, but legally they should not be able to take that away from you as long. Whoa. Oh, dude, you see that, Cody? That, that was a dolphin that just hit my line. <laughs> you oh freaked him gosh. out. That is not gonna help our fishing. <laughs> <laughs> that is not gonna help our fishing at this all. This spot is dead, dude. Oh my gosh. I thought, I almost saw I snagged it. I saw it come up a bit ago and I was like, that's oh, gonna come in pretty, pretty soon. Cody, did you see that on camera? I think I saw it. <laughs> So, Look, he's way over there already. Yeah. Oh man. So uh, that's really he's he's basically burning our entire 
So, so dolphin is like the, it's really the number one predator on the on the flats. Look, I'm seeing some mullet jumper. Let's just keep walking. Down yeah, that we'll way. keep going. There is a there is a <laughs> trough right up here, but yeah, dolphin are the number one predator on the flats. Everything's terrified of them, and they should be because they are just they're amazingly fast and smart. And uh, and when there's a dolphin around, everything's scared. They're not feeding. So that that uh, although that was a scared dolphin, <laughs> I don't know the fish sensed the. The fear in that one, but man, that's not going to help our our chance. So our, our plan was we're going to go down this edge. Since the dolphin just went down the edge, now we're going to have to uh, to hope we can get some um, some fish in the shallows. Well, we're seeing what we want here. Up here, I'm seeing quite a few mullet jump. Let me go back to where I was because this is important, and this is where we want to make sure no one ruins it for everyone else. Where they will come and stop you, or will ruin it for everyone is if you're sitting there with a ton of people. And so stay the distance as long as you're playing by the, the rules that have been set in your county, city, state, nation, whatever, you should be fine. And, and we have, you know, minus that, you know, time I had to go grab one lure out of his backpack. Um, but, but again, it's not, the, the, big, the big problem is that it's, people are partying out on the bars and the islands. Like yeah, that, that's I mean, why they shut down a lot of the boat ramps. Because we, we went out in the boat last weekend near Boca Grande, <clears> and I mean, <throat> boats were right there on that popular sandbar. And I mean, some of these boats had 10, 15 people in them. Like, yep. come on, guys, you freaking knuckleheads. Yeah, it's just not, not it's smart. Just, yeah, it's stupid. And so that's what's ruining for, you know, for a lot of fishermen. But again, um, there's, there's still a ton, an absolute ton of places you can pull off on the side of the road, on causeways, <clears throat> uh, public land, and, uh, and get out there and just wade fish. Right? Get, some, get some wading boots, get a rod, get a backpack, not a fanny pack, and, uh, and you can go out and have a, have a lot of fun. Yeah, let's so get right a now deeper we have, over um, here. Here's Whoa. where the hole is. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I don't ruin my uh, microphone. Yep. So this should be, again, if this was just four days ago when it was nice and warm, this, this flat would have had a lot of fish on it. Hashtag excuses. Yep. Oh, but it had a little hit there. So is this, is this a deep hole right here? It's deeper, yeah, I get a cast in there for sure. Yeah, it looks, uh, I don't know if that little fish got my tail or not. Yep. Yeah, that dolphin was awesome. I, I always thought I snagged it for a second. I was, this is not gonna be good. <laughs> the tarpon are gonna start showing up soon. Yep. Tell you, I interviewed uh, Andy Mill uh, yesterday. Yep. That dude knows how to catch some tarpon. Jeez. He's telling me about just some of the days they had where, you know, I was like, well, how many of you guys land? Cause you know, he, he doesn't really count. I mean, everyone's still, talks about you know a jump because it's cool to whoa it's cool to jump tarpon oh, there's a bunch of little small fish over there but uh, he's like yeah we landed four, 14 <laughs> it's like you landed 14 and just two people and on it, the and fly it, and he doesn't count leader touches too that's yeah that was, uh, i got a kick out of that yeah so he basically says you know a lot of us uh you know kind of count it as a as a catch as soon as you touch the the leader and he's like no that's what that's what people who can't catch fish say. Like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be able to feel the tarpon's mouth with your hand. I thought that was hilarious. And then had a good uh, interview on Lunker Dogs podcast. Tell you, man, that guy, well, Jeff Maggio, you guys gotta listen to his podcast. Run that dog. He is always so positive, even during the crappy times. And even though he's got like 60 people you know, have canceled on him for the foreseeable future. He is always so positive and funny. I always like that old run that dog. So Luke, let's talk about uh, tides, like ideal times for, for wade fishing. Does it, are we trying to do uh, go out when it's, uh, when the water's real low and let it come up to you the other way around? Or uh, no, I mean, I, I don't treat it any, any differently than the normal fishing. I, I don't really care so much about the tide. I just want it, I just want to be some sort of movement, you know, some, some tidal movement. So whether it's coming in, coming out, going, I don't really care. Um, as far as like this spot, like when, if this has a lot of mangroves in, uh, in a big grass flat with mangroves on the edges, at high tide, there's really, it's really tough to wade without just getting soaking wet. Ideally, it's a little bit, a little bit chilly. I don't want to get uh, totally submerged, 
And so for this, for this spot, if it's, you know, I just choose the spots based on the tide, right? And based on the depth. So in this case, I would only want to fish this at a lower tide because I would just be getting swamped by those mangroves if, uh, if the tide was, was higher. But again, if it was high tide, I'd just choose a different spot and uh, so just use spot selection. But as far as the, um, you know, the best tide, I just like moving just like boats, fishing from anything, moving current is generally going to be uh, the best time of the day to fish. And then as it gets warmer, the twilight periods are more and more important. As far as sun coming up and sun, sun going down, that's always going to trigger a strike. Uh, where you just cast, there's a bunch of little uh, little dinky fish over there. Bunch of little what? Bunch of little dinks. Okay. Man, I'm, uh, I might have to put the microphone up a little bit higher here. Yeah, we might be at the end of the road. It's all pretty deep in front of me. This is a... Looks like it gets deep all the way up to well, the Well, if that's the end of the road, then we might be calling this a early podcast, just going with some tips. Yeah, and what we'll do is, uh, yeah, we might call this one short. This is this flat's looking kind of slow. And, and we could go up and fish the bridge, and we'll do some, some tips on, uh, on bridge fishing. And uh, we can just cut out. It'll take us probably 15 minutes to walk, walk over there. So we'll do that, see if we can get some mackerel. Should be some mackerel coming in. Cool. Let's, let's do that. All right. On to the next spot. All right, guys, we are back. We waited around the area. We're now underneath the bridge. We're only going to make a few casts here. More than anything else, just wanted to kind of show you, if you're, if you're watching this, you can see that we're just under a normal bridge. Uh, there's you know, free parking. We don't have to pay to park. There's a little spot you can pull over on the side. We're right underneath here. And the other nice thing you can do, just to feel better about yourself, is Cody, you can zoom in on my back pocket. That was some uh, plastic I found on the ground back there and stumbled upon this. Not only is it a Red Bull can, but it's unopened. <laughs> is it worth risking, Luke? I don't know. <laughs> I don't we'll have think to sanitize so. the heck out of that thing. Uh, That's it, guys. We're just so. going to make a few casts underneath here, see if there might be a, a just a kind yeah. of an easy spot to get a bunch of stuff. Jacks, ladyfish, Spanish mackerel cruising through here, sometimes some snooks. But um, after that, we're going to probably go to the, the next little bend and do a little wade fishing. And uh, hopefully, there won't be any crazy porpoises yeah, or the, dolphin for the uh, for the, for the science major who wants to correct me. I and there's no porpoise here. And the strategy, dolphin. the strategy for fishing bridges like this. I mean, generally there's going to be stronger currents, and that's when you really need to uh, to position yourself properly, right? You want to if you if using lures, which we're doing, is you want to cast up current, retrieve with the current. It's a really big deal. Um, because that's the natural, that's just the natural direction that the, the fish are all going to be facing toward the predators going to be looking towards the, corn, the current. Whoa, smoke. And uh, you want to become, and that's where they're expecting their next meal to come from. And so it's really important to, uh, to do that. And right now we're fishing on the up current side of the bridge because that's the only one we can access. And the, uh, the down current side is, uh, is just not accessible. Um, sometimes they're on the front of the bridge. In many cases they are. Sometimes they're on the back side. You just never really know. It's, it's smart to try a little bit of everything. And right now we're fishing well up above the bridge, looking for mackerel. Um, so a lot of the roaming predators, mackerel, jacks, ladyfish, they'll be like well off the pilings, you tarpon as well. Um, snook, snapper, uh, grouper, I mean, those are going to be the ones where you need to get like right on the piling. They're going to be holding tight to that structure. Yeah, they hold tight to structure. We have, a, we have a crosswind coming, which is making it tough. And I didn't bring my, my gear for this. But yeah, to get the grouper, snapper, stuff like that, you basically need to get like right on the pilings. And I'm just going to position myself a little bit, a little bit further down, and try to see if we can get one out of there. But um, the the bad news is bridges like this that are just really easily accessible get a lot of fishing pressure. So these fish, they uh, they are used to to turning down offerings. Uh, live bait is de going to definitely be the, uh, the more likely uh, solution for getting a bunch of strikes. But again, you know, get a, get a jig, uh, a jig and, and give it a good little motion down there. And, and that can often fool even, even a lot of the smartest fish. So we're going to try this for a little bit and then we're going to go try another, another type of flat um, afterwards just to kind of show that even though we're waiting, we can still try and experiment a variety of different spots and if we do that enough we're eventually going to get onto some good fish yep all right let's go try that other flat dude let's do it see you the next spot oh that's <laughs> a big shark 
coming to check you out? Yeah, it was just cruising. It was more scared of me than anything. Yeah, you never know what you're going to see out here. You can see you know, we saw was a, that was a really that was a big black tip shark. Uh, something just got my tail right there. Um, We've seen a lot of, you know, obviously like starfish and stuff. We had that dolphin come up. It's just, it's just a lot of fun getting out here in the water. Even on a slow bite like this, we'll, uh, we'll find them. They've got to be hunkered down in one of these holes out here. Yeah, so all we did is we just changed sides and we're now more, a little bit more on the wind protected side, which is nicer. We can get some longer cast. And here, oh, I just missed one. And here we can, we can actually wade out to the, the very far edge where it actually gets deeper, right? We had that cold front come through and there oh let's miss another one we had that cold front come through and uh so that just made this the flats just a little bit colder than what the fish like and so they push off in deeper water um and so here on this flat you know it's wind protected which keeps it a little bit warmer uh, but also we can actually fish the deeper stuff which is where we're finally starting to get some more uh, some more action you can see cody if you look over my uh right shoulder we're right next to a boat ramp and this one is open right now, but even if it had been closed, oh, Luke's on. There we are. Even if it had been Ooh. closed, solid trout. Still do this, all right. Usually, so they're where right. There's one. There yeah. is many. Yeah, they're right where we uh, we thought they would be. And again, this is this is the same type of spot that we'd be fishing if we were in a boat, right? It's, there's nothing different if you're wade fishing versus boat fishing or kayak fishing. All the same. If the trout season were, were open, this would definitely be legal. All right, and you guys are gonna get to see another uh, another uh, ad. All right, we're out here doing a little wade fishing. Slam Shady Baby, doing trout. the job. This guy, this guy was eating. He was ready to ready to take this puffy down. Whoop, yeah, he was. Whoop, Even whoop, when whoop. a lot of the ramps are closed, guys, still catch fish. All you need, tail rod reel, tail of Slam Shady. You want your free pack? Go to slamshady.com. Slamshady.com. Click down below, baby. Pow! Yeah, so that was the uh, the tailless slam shady that got the job done. And again, the reason why I went tailless, really two reasons. Number one is that we're fishing deeper, right? This without the tail, there's less water drag. It dives down faster. The water's nice and clear, so they, they use a lot of sight right now. And without the tail, it can do a quicker motion, right? I'm twitch, twitch, drop. And a lot of times that quicker motion without the tail will actually get more strikes. If you guys were listening to the podcast and wondering what the heck I was doing, I actually brought my camera out and was videotaping Luke for a quick little uh, Facebook ad. And we're still giving away the Slam Shadies. It is one per person per household. And if you're listening to this, you can go to slamshady.com and that shark might be coming back. Uh, oh, missed another one. Go to slamshitty.com and get your uh, your free pack. What we're trying to do is one, get as many of these out there as we can. Get your feedback. This is 2.0. We're trying to always get these lures better. And number three, we're trying to set a world record. I think we're at like 52 or 53 species, and we recently had a few peeps buy them and are taking them and or live in other countries like South Africa. Um, what was that one, Luke? Like, oh, that was a nice hit there. Uh, uh, Puerto Rico is one. Puerto Rico, that's still kind of U.S. Um, but some other random places. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, species we get. And um, hopefully we'll be at 60 here before you know it. Yeah, there's definitely some fish out here, man. I got a good pop of that last one. Yeah, this is uh, this is the right type of spot. And again, it's, uh, it's just finding the right type of spot based on the trends, right? The same, like we've reported this uh, on the last, every week we give a game plan strategy. And this was the strategy on just making sure you go out and catch fish. And, it, and lately the trend has been, has been get there on the, on the deeper shelf near the channels um, along. Uh, so basically depth change and structure has been the trend. And so all we did is we just followed that exact guideline and, uh, and just had to find a spot where we could actually access by foot. And as soon as we got to it, nice trout. I, I missed something earlier, just like a couple, like a minute or two before that trout. So the, oh, fish are here. They're and there are so many aggressive. places from, from Texas up to Virginia that are just like this. Oh, absolutely. That, and then a lot of people think, oh man, I can't fish there, but, but you can. I mean, if it's a public area like, like a bridge or any of these public ramps or even the entrances to parks, 
because where we were earlier was basically the interest right interest before you would normally pay to get in the park which is closed and you're still legally allowed to park out there is once again as long as you're following just normal rules and not doing anything illegal and picking up your trash they're uh they're not really going to stop you not much they can say to you and no if you're uh if you missed earlier there are no fines for uh for fishing these 500 dollar fines and other obnoxious april fools jokes are, are yeah and as long as long as you're just being just being just respectful and uh and not just hanging around a bunch of a big group right like i don't i don't see any reason why regardless of how bad this gets why just actually fishing with like one or two people with the distance between them would be a problem you know it's uh, the i'm right behind you too so yeah you know, the uh the problem areas has been you know the the people who are still kind of acting like no, there's not a problem out there and, and, and congregating in big groups. Um, that's been why the boat ramps, why some boat ramps have closed because that's the, like, the only way they can actually prevent that from happening. Just basically do what our kids are doing is not actually talk to anyone and just go places and literally keep your, ooh, something just busted some bait out there. Yeah, so Being now that the, sun, the sun's finally out and it's, the sun's warming up the water, like the bite actually stood, should, uh, should be turning on. So and, some, uh, and man, this, this water's moving a lot quicker. Yeah. Yep. Feeling good. Oh, oh, just missed one. Right on the edge? Yeah. Feel like a little trout. Still gonna <clears throat> knock my weed guard off. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, this is, uh, this is fun. Just a good way to get out there and get a little exercise, too, you know? Yeah, we covered a lot of ground. <laughs> like a lot of people, uh, most people just go out and, and they'll just fish that bridge. Uh, like, whoop. Oh, I just missed something. How do we say that bridge? We probably would have caught some fish, but um, it, it just the, you know, the, the odds are much higher that you're gonna have success if you go out and try a bunch of different spots. Um, and so, you know, we tried a couple different spots. We finally got this, this last one and uh, the bites happened. Fish are still lethargic. We're having to get right on the bottom. I'm just taking slow bounce on the bottom. They're not coming, they're not chasing our baits down. We just gotta get right in their face. And, uh, and we still, even with tough conditions, we can still get some, uh, some action. Either way, it's just fun to be out here. Good to get the yeah. mind off the craziness out there in the news. Cool, well, uh, I mean, this has been a good one, dude. You wanna wrap it up? Yeah, let's do it. We'll stay out here a little bit longer, see if we can find something. But uh, yeah, for now, that was the, the core premise. Just get out there, enjoy the outdoors. Be safe, and uh, and just think about the trends, the same type of trends, whether you're fishing from shore, by boat, by kayak, or by foot, wading out in the water. Yep. And as I said earlier, if you haven't claimed your free pack of Slam Shady, slamshady.com, go get them. And then join us in the Insider Club. That guy, Travis, was a pretty cool uh, testimonial he gave. He's like, yeah, I've been, I've been basically enjoying all the salt strong stuff for free forever, which is fine, that's why we create it. And uh, he's like, I finally decided to, to join so I wanted to save 20%. He was buying so many Slam Shadies. I think at one time he got like 30 packs or something. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I wanted to save the 20%. And now we have everything from rods, reels, cast nets, sunglasses, 20% off pretty much everything, every major tackle brand out there. And so he joined. And the, the funniest part was like, man, I had no idea all this stuff was behind the scenes from literally every week telling you exactly where to go fish, getting on online maps and showing you where to fish to much of the mastery courses we give out. The finding spots master. I mean, we were charging three hundred dollars for that at one time, and that's free, and you can't even buy that now just for insiders. So, if you're not a member, come join us. And just I think right now, more than any time in in our lives, just the the importance of a community of of people who you can bounce ideas off of and and just talk fishing and get your mind off all the other just craziness that's going on around us that we're all having to live through right now. So I hope you join us in there. It's an incredibly positive place. We don't allow cursing. We don't allow belittling or any negativity. We've even taken the word snook candy uh, completely out of the vernacular uh, just because that was driving people crazy. So yeah, we listen to our members and uh, we, we just hit over, uh, over 13,000 now. It's still growing like crazy and uh, what to be at 15,000 before too long. So hope you see you in there. You can learn all about that at saltstrong.com. We be out. Thank you guys for all the love, all the support. Can't do it without you. Peace. Cause fishing, it's in my soul, it was